Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. The Lord is good. Amen. And all the time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Just wave at me, please, if you are blessed with your hand this early morning. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm happy uh, this Holy Sabbath. I take this opportunity to thank God for the gift of life, for the gift of good health, and more so for the gift of salvation, which he has given us through Jesus Christ. I'm happy to be here today at New Life SDA. Uh, I really feel humbled. It's my first time to be here to fellowship with you, to worship our God in this church, and I'm happy for the warm hospitability, for the warm welcome. May God continue blessing you. I'm happy for the leadership of this church, our pastors, Pastor Kali, and my friends, pastors who are working in this church, all the leaders. I'm privileged to be here today, and I'm really much humbled. Uh, in a special way also, uh, I'm very happy to be here. I feel at home because my mom is a member of this church. I call her my mom. She is from my home village, Teacher Felicity. Kindly, where you are, you can just wave and greet the church of God. Amen. Amen. And my brother also, Brother Mike, I'm happy to have him around also. Happy day. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Today really is a great day, a, good, a day that the Lord has made, a day that God wants to share with us and to encourage us and to draw us nearer and nearer to him. As I was coming from Meru, where I work, uh, I was sent with greetings from my family. My wife and my little children, they sent me with greetings. Do you receive the greetings? Amen, amen. In the universities and colleges also where I serve, I notify them that today I'll be here at a New Life SDA, and they as well sent me their greetings. Do you receive them? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really much humbled. My name, as pastor has already said, I'm Pastor Crispin Muirigi, and uh, I love Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and who are it, not him who has been on my side, I could have died long, long time ago. When I got this invitation to come, it being an ambassador Sabbath, I was really much humbled because my years, my days when I was an ambassador, I lived a life that did not glorify God. So when I get a chance to talk to ambassadors, I'm very much humbled and ask God to use me to share with them something that can help them and encourage them to know that them being at the feet of Jesus in the house of the Lord, at their end, you are blessed, my brothers and sisters. You are really blessed and I just want God to continue opening your eyes that you may know how important it is, how privileged that you are to be in the house of the Lord at your early age. Many young people are out there. They are out there having fun, in quotes, they are not having fun. They are just perishing. They are just dying. But they don't know. When they look at you in church, they think you are misled. They think you are wasting your time. But I want to encourage you that remain there. Continue fixing your eyes on Jesus, who is the author and the finish of your faith, who knows you and loves you, and sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come and die because of your sins. Today, our topic of our sermon or our theme is Who is God? Who is the Lord of your life? Who is the Lord of your life? Let us pray. Our dear Father, God Almighty, here comes our question. Who is the Lord of our lives? I stand as your child 
as your servant. I'm not toward the Lord. Forgive me my sins. Like Jeremiah, I pray that you may put your words in my mouth, that I may not speak my own, but you just use me as a vessel to bring the message into our hearts that will prepare each one of us for your second coming. Father in heaven, bless your children as we all look at you and listen to hear from you. Oh God, may you speak to us that each one of us shall be blessed and that all shall come out of this place praising and worship you for you are a God who loves us so much. May I decrease as you increase. I lift you up, Christ, so that you can draw all of us to yourself. This in Jesus' name I pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Who is the Lord of your life? Our key text, our key text we've got it from the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, verse, verse number 10. I read in the King James Version. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee and Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee and Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Brothers and sisters, when you hear me asking that question, who is the Lord of your life, sometimes you may wonder, does pastor not know that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives? Why is he asking us such a question. Who is the Lord of our life? Does he not know we are Christians? Does he not know we are Adventists? Does he not know that Jesus is the Lord of our lives? Why is this question? But I want us today to think and ask ourselves, could we be saying that Jesus is the Lord of our lives just by saying, whereas our actions deny that he is the Lord of our lives, could that be the case in our lives? And when Jesus came to this earth, to this world, he came to deliver us. And when the time for his ministry came, he went and was baptized. And after he was baptized, he was led by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness where he fasted for 40 days. And after his fast, he was tempted by the devil, by Satan. And the devil came to him and tried to tempt him, making sure that he fall so that he cannot accomplish his mission of saving the lost human beings. But Jesus, because he knew who the devil was, because he knew that the devil is not happy with human beings, because he knew what Satan done, even when he had created Adam and Eve and blessed them and gave them a garden where they were to live happily, holy lives, Jesus remembered and knew that this same Satan came to Adam and Eve and tempted them. And after tempting them, he made them to fall into sin. And that now makes him to be very careful of who am I dealing with, of who am I dealing with. He deceived Adam and Eve. And now here, he is so much working to see how he can as well deceive me so that I cannot save humanity. And he begins very well with the attempt of appetite. That Jesus, you know you have fasted here for so many years, for so many days. 
and I know you are angry. And because you are angry, this is a stone. You have the power. You are the son of God. Why can't you just change it to be a brand and use it and eat it? But Jesus knew very well who he is dealing with and quickly says that surely man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. And quickly, Satan is not content. He continues to tempt him. He continues to tempt him and he takes him at the holy city at the pinnacle of the temple and tells him, throw yourself down and God will send angels who will come and save you, who will come and deliver you. And Jesus overcomes that other temptation and says, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. And Satan is not content again. He continues he continues and throws another temptation. Hey, hey, come over, Jesus. Come over, Jesus. Look at all this kingdom and the glory. This belongs to me. If you just bow down and worship me, I will give you everything. And now Jesus quickly tells of the Satan, come out from me, Satan. Come away from me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Today, Satan is still tempting us. Today, Satan is still deceiving us. Today, Satan is working day and night to see to it that he becomes our Lord. By beholding, you become changed. When you behold Jesus Christ, you become like him. When you behold Satan, you become like him. When you obey the Lord, Jesus Christ, you become like him. When you obey Satan, you become like him. Who is the Lord of your life? Whom do you obey? Whom do you obey? Who directs your decisions? Who directs your thoughts? Who directs your wants? When you speak as an ambassador, what ones do you speak? When you listen to music, what type of music do you listen to? When you watch movies, what type of movies do you watch? When you eat, what type of food do you eat? When you cloth, what type of clothes do you wear? This is a question each one of us should ask ourselves. And I want you to know today that the life that you are living has been influenced by your Lord. So just interrogate and meditate and look back at the life that you live. And you will be able to know who directs your life. Thank you. You will be able to know who is the Lord of your life. You will be able to know who is the Lord of your life? By just looking back at the life that you live. All of us have been called by Christ. And you have been called to be his disciples. And we have a great commissioning that we get in Matthew chapter 28. As from verse 19. That go yeah, into all nations. And make people my disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to do my word and to live my word. And the law, I will be with you always. Each and every day, there is that commissioning that you have as an Adventist. The question is, do you heed to that Commissioning, or which commissioning do you heed each and every day? Do you obey what Jesus has told you to do? Or who do you obey? Whenever you get an opportunity 
to share the word of God? Do you share or are you nervous? You are afraid as a young person. Are you confident enough to open up and say that you are an Adventist? Some of us, we find ourselves even in opportunities where we can preach, where we can lift the name of the Lord higher, where people can know that we serve a living God, but we hide, we shun away, we are ashamed of the gospel. It's my prayer today that we learn, we, ch- we be charged by the message from Romans chapter 1 verse 16 when Paul speaks and says that he can never be ashamed of the gospel because it is the power that saves men. Greeks and Jews, those who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we look at the world we are living in today, people are worshipping idols. People have not known the truth. People have been lost. And you and me are the people, the remnant that God has in these last days to stand out and to make everyone see that there is a people of God in these last days. That when everyone else has given up, when everyone else is living their own lives, is saying, my dress, my choice, my life, my life, you know very well that is not your life. You know very well that... You are living because of Christ. That is because of Christ that you are the way you are today. And everyone has that calling to know for sure that God wants to use you. But how can he use you if you have not acknowledged that he is the Lord of your life through your lifestyle? It is not possible for him to use you if you have not acknowledged that he is the Lord of your life through your lifestyle. How is your life each and every day? If we go together in the book of Matthew, chapter number 7, chapter number 7, as from verse 21, the Lord of the Lord says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he, but he that doeth the will of my Father which, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I knew you now. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. We could look at it and say, we are already in church. We know the truth. We keep the Sabbath day holy. We are Seventh-day Adventist, waiting for Christ's second coming. You are right. But it's my prayer that as we say that we know Jesus as we say that he is the Lord of our life. It's my prayer, my humble prayer, that him too, Jesus, sitting on his throne, can look down and say, surely I'm the Lord of that daughter. I'm the Lord of that son of mine. It would be very unfortunate when I'm here preaching Saying that Jesus is the Lord of my life. But when he looks at me, he is ashamed. He knows and he can look at my heart. And he can really say, I'm not the Lord of his life. The Lord of his life is Satan. Because of the way he is doing his things. But I'm here. Speaking. Telling you about him. Telling you about Jesus. But when he looks at me, he is like, what is that young man talking about? Or who is he talking about? I'm not his Lord. It's my prayer, brethren, that as we say he is the Lord of our lives, that he can also say and testify that mm, he, yes, I'm the Lord of his life. Because of the life he is living, each and every day, people can look at him and see me. People can talk to him and see me. 
people can interact with him and see me and that is why Jesus spoke as he was giving a parable about his kingdom in Matthew chapter 25 as from that one and says that when the son of man will be coming with his glory with his angels as a shepherd he shall separate the goats from the sheep and the sheep he shall put them on the right hand side and after putting them in the right hand side he shall say that i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me clothes i was sick you visited me in hospital i was in prison you came to see me you came to pray with me you came to share the word of the lord with me there are many prisoners there who are waiting for you to go and share the word of life with them there are many in hospital beds who are waiting for you to go and share a word of encouragement with them there are many who are thirsty there are many who are hungry for the word of god and even for the food physical food and they are looking for someone you and me we go and share with them but who what are we doing how we reaching out or we are just saying others will do it or are we saying others will do it on our behalf and when jesus speaks that parable it helps me now reason and understand really that if he is the lord of our lives we will do just as my brother the song that he has sung here the song to the children that i want to walk like jesus like my hands let them do what jesus would have done my mouth let it do what jesus would have done my thoughts my eyes my legs young people we live in times when there are a lot of temptations when i was some few years a teenager and i joined egerton university and because of peer pressure because of peer pressure and because i was not abiding in the word of god i was not a great student of the word of god i did not believe in god i did not believe in the scriptures i was went away i did know as the word of god says in first corinthians 15:33 that do not be deceived because bad companion bad company corrupts good morals i hanged around friends who confused me who deceived me and i changed and become and became a strange person i started abusing drugs i started abusing alcohol i became a drug addict and after becoming a drug addict i became a pendler selling bang in the university and finally i quit i dropped and i went back to meru why i went and continued pendling and smoking and at the end of it all i just became a mad man i couldn't walk in the streets even without shoes very dirty i couldn't walk all the way to isiolo on foot and come back to meru i couldn't go to nkobo all the way on foot and back and i was just tossed by the devil i was just ruined and my life was lost surely at that time Satan was the lord of my life because everything i was doing i was pleasing satan i didn't know my, my body is the temple of the holy spirit i could do anything with my body i didn't care i didn't care i couldn't spend in in raves in in bars the whole night immorality was my day was my life each and every day i did know that there is a god who deserves worship with my life and after dying in sin after wasting completely helpless and hopeless that is why god and that is when god came through for me and he touched me and he delivered me and he gave me a chance and today now i'm serving him hallelujah our god is faithful and luke chapter 19 verse 10 tells us that the son of man came to seek and to save the lost those that have gotten into sinful lives so that he can deliver them and give them a second chance and give them a new life and give them a new beginning because second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 tells us that anyone who is joined to jesus christ is a new creation the old is gone and the new has come this church is called new life 
When I look at you, I can see you have new life. Amen. If in this church and you don't have new life, you are living the whole the way. I pray that God may help you. That God may deliver you. That as from today, you begin living a new life. That as you're going out there, everyone can say that surely Jesus is the Lord of this young man. But it will be very unfortunate when we say Jesus is the Lord of our lives. But when the world looked at us, they are like, this is a small Satan. It will be very much unfortunate. Because of our interactions with the people, because of our speeches with the people, because of the many things that we could be doing in our lives, in our church, in our workplaces, in our homes, and in many other places that God has blessed us to be. Who is the Lord of your life? Who is the Lord? Of your life. Who is the Lord of your life? The great controversy. That we see in the Bible. The great controversy between Satan. And Christ. It's about to worship. You will worship your Lord. You will worship your Lord. You will do what your Lord says you do. And in the context of the three angels' messengers, in Revelation chapter 14, as from verse 16, John the Revelator saw Jesus, and Jesus revealed to him things that will happen. And he revealed to him, and John saw an angel flying. In the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. And this angel was not quiet. This everlasting gospel he was to preach it to all nations, to all tribes, to all kindred, to all tongue. And with a loud voice, this angel couldn't speak, saying, Fear God and give him glory. For the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made heaven and earth, seas and springs of water. And when this angel speaks, of course, as Adventists, we know that is a revelation, that a message that God has given to his church in these last days. You are the messenger, you are the angel that is to move out with the everlasting gospel with the everlasting gospel, telling the world to fear God and to give him glory. And we'll do that through your lifestyle. In our quinquennium, these five years, we are talking about I will go. I will go and proclaim the three angels' messengers. But it is very easy to say I will go. Very easy indeed. Saying I will go with your mouth, very easy. But Going is not that easy. That's why you find when it comes to being faithful in giving tithes and offering, we struggle. This time you are faithful, the other time you are not faithful. This time you are faithful, the other time you are not faithful. You are faithful today, the other time, oh God, you will understand. You know, I have a lot of issues. Our lifestyle is enough, is enough to make the world know that we should all fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. By worshiping him, who made heaven and earth, the season springs of water and rested on the Sabbath, the seventh day. Hallelujah. A second angel speaks. And John sees him moving also, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city that made all nations to drink the wine of our fornication. Eve 
we are not to stand according to the way God wants us to stand. It will be very hard for us to draw people to come from the Babylon, to come from the deceptions that they have been deceived into false worship, into false doing of things. It will be very hard for us to touch their lives. But our interactions with them will help them so that this warning as we are giving them through our lifestyles, through our speeches, they will surely say that these are the people who serve and who know the Lord and who Jesus is the Lord of their lives. And we shall be warning them as the third angel speaks and says any man who worships the beast and his image, and as the mark of the beast on his forehead and on his hand. There is some torment, there is some torture. He shall drink of the cup of the wrath of God that is not mixed. The only way to make the world come to Christ and see that warning and take it seriously, it's when surely Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Through our lifestyle, through our speeches, through our way of doing things, that will be the only way to touch lives and to make a difference in people's lives. My brothers and sisters, you have to make a choice today of who will be the Lord of your life as from today. You will have to make a descendant choice. A descendant choice choice. By being determined that I've seen that really Jesus is not the Lord of my life. I'm a liar. I'm, I'm always in lasting, lasting, in fornication. I'm always watching pornography. Every time I get some battles or some internet, I get into evil sites and I'm here saying that Jesus is the Lord of my life. So I'm lying to myself. Jesus help me. You are in secret sin as a young person. You have gotten yourself even into masturbation and the devil has ruled of your life. He is the Lord of your life because he commands you. This is the time to masturbate now and you are running up and down. But you come in church and as you come in church it is because God wants you to hear today that surely he needs you. He needs you to turn around. He needs you to say enough is enough as from today I want you Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I want you to be the master of my life. I want to be the designer of my life. I want everything I do that I do something that glorifies thy holy name. I don't want to do my own things. I want to do what lifts you up and the world looks at you and you draw them. You draw them to yourself. There was a family. A father who had two sons. And one day the youngest son went to the elder son. And as they were sharing, the elder son told the, the youngest son that, you know what? Our dad is very wise. Our dad is intelligent. And the, the youngest son did not believe that. He was like, no, I don't believe in you. Our father is not that wise. I think we are as much wise as he is. I think we should, I, should, I should prove it, it to you that it's not that wise. Sometimes young people, we think we are wise, wise than even our parents. And when they guide us, we just like, ah, mom, you don't know these things. Ah, daddy, I will shake him and know, you know? So this young man said, I will prove to you that dad is not as wise as we are. So he went in a nearby bush and caught hold of a small bird. And he came with this bird and told his elder brother, let us go to my dad and I will show you that our dad is not as wise as we are. And when they went there, he went and held this bird in his arm and closed there. And ask the father. Father, I know you are very wise. I know you are very wise. 
In my hands here, I have a bird. My question to you is, tell me, is this bird alive or is it dead? And the father was like, mm, mm, ah. back in the young man's mind, he knew for sure that when the father says that this bird is alive, the young man will kill it, will crush it, and give the dad a dead bird. And he knew when the dad shall say that this bird is dead, the young man knew back in his mind that he shall just let it go and tell the dad, oh, you did not know. The good thing is that because the father, for sure he was wise, he could see far. He could see far. He also had that idea that this young man is joking with me. And he told him, my son, thank you for the good question. But the answer is in your hands. Thank you for the question, but the answer is in your hands. You are the one to choose if you want that body to be alive or to be dead. And the boy was shocked at the wisdom of his father. And quickly, from that story, we can draw something very small as I conclude. The choice of who will be the Lord of your life is in your hands. It is in your hands. That you say like Joshua, I and my family, we shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. That as from today, I want to live that righteous life, that holy life that God has called me, has called us to live. Who has that prayer this time? That God, I have realized that I'm just a professed Adventist. I'm just a professed Christian. I always say you are the Lord of my life. But I'm shocked by the meditation and by your word that I have another Lord. And as from today, you have been given me the free will to choose who the Lord of my life is. I want you, Lord, to be the Lord of my life. Who has such a prayer? Amen. 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 Let's be upstanding. Amen. Let us pray. Our dear Father God Almighty, we thank you for your word that has come to us at such a time as this. That you want each one of us to make a sober decision, a sober choice, who will be the Lord of his or our life. Your children have lifted their hands asking you, Lord, to help them so that through their lifestyle, really, you can be the Lord of their lives. Forgive us our sins, cleanse us and wash us with the precious blood, and help each one of us, O Lord, as from today, to live a life that is worthy of your calling, that when everyone looks at us, they can see you, Jesus, and they can praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.